Let's go ahead and uh, sit uh, in our seats if we can, please, and get started with our session this evening. By the way, it marks our last session of the night and of the week. It's been very good. Thank you so much for John doing this uh, for us this week. We've learned so much, and I want to encourage you uh, that each one of these sessions is on our YouTube channel, West Freeway Church of Christ, so feel free to go back and see them as often as you'd like so that you can continue to keep your, your minds fresh on what we're doing here with, with these sessions. Tonight is the session in which we all get to vote, so uh, by the way, you don't have to have your voter card. And I know everyone pretty much in this room is over 18, so you can vote. So, well, I don't know about you, sir. <laughs> but I, I think John had mentioned even the young people can, can vote if they like. So that might be an opportunity for you. But anyway, Tommy Simonton is going to lead us in our songs tonight. Uh, following that, we will have, or before that, we'll have a word of prayer. And in just a moment, I'm going to ask Rick Johnson, if he would, to come up and lead us in that prayer. And then Tommy will lead us in our song. John will get right into our last session of this launch session here for Home Mission. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Let's uh, ask Rick now to come and, and lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to come here tonight and to learn a little bit more about your word and, and uh, the home missions. And we thank you for blessing us with John Orr and his talents and abilities. And we, uh, we pray, Father, that this will increase your kingdom and strengthen your kingdom here. And uh, we want to be a part of your kingdom and we want to be a part of your kingdom growth. And uh, this is our prayer for a blessing on this effort. In Jesus' name, amen. Please turn your psalm books number 23. If you don't mind and you're able, stand. The Church of Christ anthem. Everyone should know this. <clears throat> there is beyond the azure blue. A God can see from human side. He takes his cards with every hue and frame the worlds with his great mind. There is a God, he is alive, and then we live and we survive. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> or I should say, ladies and gentlemen, 
There was once a little boy that was playing with his train, and every, he let the train run around two or three times, and then he would stop it at the uh, at the train station. He'd say, "Now, you old, you old, uh, cusses, and you old uh, uh, you old cusses, and you old hags, get on this train, hurry up about it." Well, he did that two or three times, and his mother her overheard him. And she says, what are you saying that for? He said, well, I heard it from granddaddy. She said, no, you say all you ladies and all you gentlemen, instead of old cusses and old hags, get on board, please. So he runs it two or three times around, and finally stops at the train station. He says, all you ladies and all you gentlemen, please hurry and get on board, because if you don't, that old cuss in the kitchen is going to cut, cut us down here. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the takeoff session tonight. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we are happy that you came and have come during this week. Uh, we had several come today and fill out visitation sheets. Now, I want you to know, except for my wife, it was all men that came up here and filled out those sheets. I have never seen that at any of the over 100 uh, sessions that we've done around the country, I've never seen all men except my wife. So, but I'm grateful that all you guys came up here and we're still going to need uh, people to run this thing, the Habanero Visitation Ministry. Okay, now uh, let's pass out the... Um, the um, little labels to everybody. Okay, so if you don't have a label, you should have five labels. Start singing a song. Well, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do better than that. Uh, I won't sing the Noxema song this time like I did last night. So. <laughs> Uh, Jim just walked in the door. He was running a little late. But Jim, if you want to come on up, he's going to tell you how they did the, uh, uh, a little bit how they did the Habanero Visitation Ministry at Freetown Road in Grand Prairie. So, Jim, if you want to come on down, you're the next contestant on... Wheel of Fortune. So thank you. As John mentioned, at the um, Freetown congregation, when they launched Hab Habanero, they, they had a group of about 20, 22 people that had signed up to be on uh, the different teams. And as you know, one of the keys is to make it as user-friendly as possible. Whatever we're doing, if it's user-friendly, then there's a greater chance of success. So the, uh, the lady, um, uh, her name is Bonnie Esparza. What she did, she was the facilitator, coordinator for, for the program. What she did is she bought these cloth bags, and what she would do, um, she had a folder, and she made a folder for each person that was on a team. And she put their name on it. And so if there, there's 22 people in the program or in the, in the ministry doing the visitation, if it be red, yellow, blue, green, she would put their name on it, on the folder. And then what she would do, she would fill out the form that he had showed as far as the contact form that had the name, the address, and the information. She would put that in their own folder. She would buy the gift, already have the gift in the bag with the folder and the contact information, and 
she would hand it to them at church. So if you're the person making the visit, what you get is you get the bag, you get the gift for wherever you're going to the person that you're visiting, the contact sheet with information on it, and uh, the folder. So you would make the visit, and then after you made the visit, you would put the information on that contact form. For example, you know, if they're new to the community, if they're attending somewhere else, or if they're living with their children, or whatever information that would be helpful, turn that, write that in, put that in the sheet, back in your folder, back in the bag, and either Wednesday night or the following Sunday, when you saw Bonnie, you'd give it back to her. She Also, if you were scheduled to do a couple of visits, then there would be two contact sheets in your folder. And the, the benefit is that, again, if a person is going to get their own gift and they're already working or they already have other things going on, when they get this, it's, it's turnkey to go make the visit. They don't have to think, oh, I need to get a gift, so now I've got to run to Dollar Tree or do this, because anything that we can do to remove obstacles increases the chance for success. And talking with the, the people on the visitation, uh, those different teams, they, they loved it. They loved it. Even, again, even if you're filling out cards, get the bag, get the names in the form, in your folder, and then when you've sent your cards, you fill out, right, because there's a contact sheet for them as well, and then you turn it back in. She would maintain a master list on her computer, and, and similar to the way John described last night about where you've got the master and then you've got the copy. So she would file those in the appropriate folder, and then she had it on, on her computer. The next visit by whomever they would get the same information. She would upload that information uh, from the contact. So if I made the visit this week and next week you make it, when you open your folder, it's got the contact information and then it's got the comments from the visit that I made. So anything pertinent, you now have a history of that visit. And that continues on. So let's say they fall off from a hot, they go to a cool. So we just go to sending them a card two months from now. But the contact information still shows the history. So let's say that when I made a visit, I found out that, that um, they had, a, had a, a, a spouse that had been in the hospital the person that's filling, sending them a card two months later could put the comment, I hope your husband Jim is feeling better. It gives a personal connection and you maintain the history of that visit on that card and it builds that relationship. So again, you will find the way to make it most user-friendly for you and for whoever is coordinating and, and the personalities and the, the schedules of the people that are involved in the different teams. But again, I would say that the objective is to, to make it as user-friendly as possible to increase the chance of success and document everything. When you're making a visit, any information that you can share can be helpful. As, as Brother John has talked before about you know, find out if they have children living in the area. Find out anything that you can that can be useful, helpful information down the road to make and strengthen the connection we have with that person. Thank you, Brother Jim. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to run over some of this if I can. And, uh, and I want to show you I'll be careful with it. <clears throat> I want to show you uh, what you can get for a dollar. Everything on this table costs a dollar except one item. Now if you can guess which item it is, 
uh, except for Tommy, he, already, he looked it up on Amazon. So anyway, uh, but if you can guess which item it is, you can have it. So uh, the, table. the table, yeah, no, you can't have the table. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> now, um, Tommy, if I could get you up here, you, you don't have to have your microphone. Uh, if you don't want to, but uh, I'm going to give these out to different ones of you, and I want you to know that I got these at Dollar Tree, and I, I had a bunch of stuff that I was going to bring from home that I bought for a dollar from garage sales. Like I bought like a brand new Scrabble game still in the shrink wrap for a dollar. Well, that, that's going to cost you seven to ten bucks at a store, but you, you could take that. Boy, wouldn't that impress people? You want to try to keep it to a dollar, or in this case, coffee in a mug, that would be a dollar each, and you could have something like that. So who would like the coffee in the mug? Okay, well, whoever's, keep your hand up. <laughs> Now, you don't get two, you can just have one, but now here's something uh, that my wife found. If you want to keep it, fine. If you want to give it to somebody, make sure you take Dollar Tree label off, okay? Okay, here's a welcome thing to put on your door. Who'd like it? Okay. And then here's a book, I Died Last Night by John Orr. Who would like it? Okay, there we go. And here's a book called Ready Reference for Growing Christians, Facts and Scriptures on 100 Biblical Subjects. Okay. And here are three boxes of the original Cracker Jack with prizes inside. Who wants that? Chris? <laughs> My wife and I talked about that. Do they make Cracker Jack? And I said, I think they do. Well, do they still give you the prize inside? Well, there's evidence that they still have Cracker Jack with the prize inside. Now, here's a little hang-up thing that's pretty neat. It says, thinking of a master plan. For those of you who procrastinate, <laughs> this is a good sign for you. Who'd like it? Nobody has a master plan? There we go. Brian does. Okay, now here is, uh, here's a group that I was in, in, involved in in the 80s, and we wrote most of our own songs, except for one, and there's two CDs, and it's called Hearts of Praise is the name of the group, and one of the most popular songs out of it was the business meeting. And we opened for a cappella in the 80s, so anyway. So, looks like you got a taker there. Anybody else want one? Oh, well, I got two more. I've got several of these. Okay, well, here's a bunch of them. So, <laughs> raise your hand up if you want one of them, and, and he'll, uh, he'll pass them out to you. Okay, and I thought this is a, a neat thing. Here is a sweet and sour Tootsie Roll Pop bouquet. What do you think? Does anybody want that? Okay, James. Here you go, sir. Now here is, uh, this cost a dollar each, but this is a pot holder and a kitchen towel. This came from Dollar Tree. And it says, love is a four-legged word. I guess that'd apply to animals or something. Who would, like, who would like the kitchen thing in the pot holder? Oh, come on, somebody would. Okay. Then, uh, did any, then this, I think I know who might like these. These are 
you get these at Dollar Tree, and these are really good and very, very popular when you go out and visit. These are cake or cookie pans. They are, uh, there's three of them for a dollar, and it's got a, a lid on it and a way that you can fold it over, and it's just really good to take it, and it looks healthy. It doesn't look like it has COVID-19. Would, would someone like one of those to put cookies and cake? Okay, there you go. Anybody else? You want one? No? <laughs> okay, any other takers on that? And then these come out at Easter time and only at Easter time. Uh, these are Tootsie Roll Banks. It has the candy inside and a little bank on top. Who would like that? Tootsie Rolls and a Tootsie Roll Bank. Now here are sure fresh, shallow square uh, things that you can put food in or cookies or cakes or, or yeah, something like that. There we go. And you can take it and, and, and can you buy those three for a dollar and you can give them to, to visitors or whoever. Here's a, here's a little uh, thing that you can put in your home on the wall. It's uh, relax. You put it in your bath. You put it in your bathroom. Anybody want it? Oh, come on! Somebody has some class. <laughs> Anybody want it? Going once, going twice. There we go. Then here's a here's a package of Smarties that you can carry in your hand. Anybody like Smarties? Oh, there we go. Ted likes Smarties. And here's jo Starburst jelly beans. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then here is a happy birthday glass with Lifesaver uh, gummies inside that you can give to somebody to on their birthday. Who, who would like to do that? Huh? What? <laughs> Oh, is that a wine glass? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well. And then here's, here's just a regular jar with butterscotch in it, butterscotch candy. Who's telling me they like butterscotch the other day? Okay, there you go. There's butterscotch. And then here's circus peanuts in the bag. Anyone one like that? Okay. That was my favorite candy when I was a kid. My grandmother would always have that. And then here are sippy cup, two sippy cups, grounded for life. Is, is that what you want? Okay. Grounded for life. And then here's another cup, too, that's a Slurpee cup that you can have. Somebody who wants one of those cups? Okay, uh, here's a tote bag, little girl tote bag, and inside the tote bag, we'll put in these, uh, these uh, books inside there, uh, Bible books for little children. Who would like the tote bag with the Bible books for children? Okay, now I want to tell you about this. Uh, Megan Clark brought this, and they had made uh, 50 of them. And they're, uh, it says, Planting the Seeds of Kindness. And it's got, uh, it's got, um, I can't read it. What, <laughs> what's the name of the seed? No, no, the name of the seed. Oh, that is the name of the seed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's got a pen and it's got a homemade bookmark. 
And so that's something you can take out. And that's homemade. It looks nice. Who would like that? Okay. See, it doesn't have to be bought. It could make be homemade. Now, we also have, we can give these out to four different people. We have, I'm going to tell you something. These are home mission deluxe ink pens. They work really well. They work really well. And they're from home mission. Who wants a home mission pen? <laughs> And they got, I've got flowers to color. <clears throat> Any grandkids? Anybody want flowers to color? Okay, right on the back row there. And, uh, and then we got the crayons to go with them. Okay. And then we got pencils and four, and four notebooks in here. So who wants the pencils and the notebooks? Anybody? Ollie, you hadn't got anything yet. Still do. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Who else hadn't gotten anything yet? Okay, there you go. And then here's a, here's a ladybug with a little bale that you can put in your garden. And then here's original gourmet Danish cookies. Uh, anybody? Isn't that nice, those little tins? Who would like it? And we got one more I died last night by John Orr. The I died last night didn't cost a dollar. They're six ninety five. So anyway, Brian wanted one. They're on Amazon, so you can go, go look them up, the comments on them, so whatever. We've given out several thousand of those, and we're waiting for another order to come in, but we give out a lot of those to churches. And then one last one of these. Somebody can bake some cookies or make a cake and put icing on it and bring it up, and we can take it out to people, and I'll tell you, they will love you to death. They'll like that a lot more than they like the ladybug. <laughs> She's got plenty of them. Have you gotten anything yet? Well, it's about time to get something. <laughs> and by the way, there are still some more items here. If you, if you weren't here last night and didn't get some of these handmade items from Team Soul from, from Faith Village, get you one. You can get it for yourself or you can get it to give to somebody, a neighbor, and make a big difference. So if you go to their door and they're not home, what two items do you put in it? A gift in an oops card, right. So remember, save your Walmart sacks. Or Dollar Tree. Well, no, don't use a Dollar Tree sack. They think you're cheap. <laughs> okay, the takeoff sale. Remember your 12 goals that you gave me? Well, we ended up, y'all got so rambunctious, we ended up with 16 goals. So if you would, take your, take your labels and write your name in every one of the labels. Now, you're going to take four of the labels, and you'll, you have 16, 12 here and four here, you can use four of those labels to vote for your top four. But your green label, you write your name on it, and you put your green label on which team you want to be on. If you want to be on the red team, uh, and I'll explain all these just a minute, but the red team is the ones that go out to visitors immediately and either send cards or go make a personal visit and take a gift. We had a family that visited Sunday, and it's the only one in the red folder out there, 
And we need to send them about eight or nine different cards. Thank you for coming to us because they're between here and Andrews, Texas, but they're planning to move here. So if they get seven or eight or nine cards in the mail, guess where they're going to go to church? And they've got a whole youth group in their family. <laughs> Just about. Uh, the yellow team are the ones who do follow-up from the red team, and they go out and visit someone every other week, and they're the ones that hold Bible studies. There's two in the yellow team. The green team is the one who carries out the power for today, or if you want to go and carry out something to new members, in, uh, newcomers to town, like a little basket or something, you can do that. And they also work with uh, the nursing home, too. Uh, and then the blue team are card writers. You need to write cards or text. And um, we need a lot of these because we probably filled out around 200 visitation sheets and we weren't even close to being finished. But most of them start out in the blue. And the blue is where they're not coming here or they're not coming very much. And so you can send out thinking of you cards. They all need to be positive thinking of you cards, or you can uh, send out birthday or anniversary cards, and then you can send out, um, I forget what the other one was, uh, but there's another type of card that you can, oh, oh, special event cards. All of them will go through the special event cards. Now then, I noticed something that and all the books and directories that I looked through, no one had their birthday in it. No birthdays, no anniversaries. So nobody knows. Now listen, this, folks, is one of the best ways to get people to come to this congregation. Remember that story I told you about the lady with the cancer? She had two cards from her church she went to all her life. And then she had a whole stack of cards from the Church of Christ, and she said, I'll be going to your church until I die. And she was baptized two weeks later. I'm telling you, it makes a difference, card writings. And, and we can go, uh, if we need to, we can go buy some cards and have them back there for you. And, um, and you, can, uh, you can mail them out. But we need... If you want to be on the red team, you're the one that has to go out with the first 72 hours or write a card in the first 72 hours. Unfortunately, the one family it, that's in there has already, it's already been 72 hours, but you can get a copy of it and write them something. Yellow team, you, you, you'd either, you're either doing Bible studies or you're trying to get somebody to place membership or you're going after someone trying to get them to be restored. Green team is you're just a delivery person. That's pretty good. You're playing Santa Claus. That's not bad, is it? And then the blue team, you're writing cards. But we do need team leaders, and we need people that will be willing to work the booth. So if you're willing to do that, put your, if you're willing to be, in, you know, to keep everything up and keep the gifts going and everything, then put your uh, green, green, um, green label on the, uh, on team leader thing. Okay, well, now let me go over the 12 things or 16 things that you put. These are the goals and needs that you said that you had. Preacher or evangelist? Preacher slash evangelist. You don't want just a preacher. You want an evangelist. You want somebody who's going to go out and and bring people in, go out into the community, meet everybody, and have Bible studies and teach the rest of us to do Bible studies. Attract young families. Is that something that's high on your list? A youth group. How about that one? Plans are being made to have a youth group. And so if you support that, if that's one of your top four, then put it, put it there. Fix the baptistry. If that's one of your top four, then put it there. A blessing box outside. That's where you put canned goods, specifically the ones you open up, and that tells everybody that you care, and that when they get food, then they don't have to come up to the door. 
which that's a little unsettling sometimes uh, when Darla is by herself here and has to open the door and get groceries for people. So if, if you have the blessing box, it's out front and we just all need to make sure and keep it full. And you'll find that people in the community will help out. And they'll tell them that they'll tell them that this church cares about people. And remember that that note they put in the blessing box at Faith Village in Wichita Falls. She said, Thank you so much for the food. It's the first time in my life I didn't have to beg borrow or steal food. That makes a difference to people. Um, advertising. Some of y'all mentioned that. Now there are th I'll just talk about three, th three ways we can advertise. One is I gave Brandon a copy of, uh, of some um, we can get two four by eight uh, coroplast boards for about 150 a piece and we can put up some uh, studs behind it in the yard. And so for about three, $400 in max, you can put out a sign to advertise what you want to advertise in here for about six months, and then you change it out in about six months. And the Coroplast signs are flimsy, but if they're stapled to the boards, they'll last about six months. And they look real nice, they really do. And they look professional. Uh, so, uh, and they won't tear up like a uh, plastic banner will. Plastic banner, a good windstorm, and it's gone. So, uh, uh, and they're not cheap either. So, uh, that's one way. Another way is a church in Iowa uh, put, uh, made some core plast signs about that big and put them on a, uh, on a stave and stapled it to the stave, and it said, I love the West Side Church of Christ, and then put the email address underneath it, and they put them in their yards. And so there were, there were signs in people's yards all over. When I told Faith Village about that, man, they got excited about it. So we made up 100 signs, they went just like that, and I think they had to make about 200 more signs and I saw people for like two years after that having that. It says, I love my church. Go to dot, dot, faithvillage.com, you know, whatever. And, and that made a difference. People ask, well, who's, what's your church? And so on. So that's another way of advertising, and you can use your own home unless you have a HOP or HMO or whatever that's ruthless. <laughs> uh, and then also, um, you might could check and see what one of those uh, changing billboards cost. They don't cost as much as like the full billboard, but there's a changing billboard that, that's right by the exit that comes from the east to exiting onto Las Vegas Trail. You know what I'm talking about? And that's probably... Probably I don't know. Probably around six to eight hundred a month. I don't know. I've never priced them, but that's a possibility as well. So anyway, uh, okay. Going on with our twelve goals. Uh, prayer box. By your blessing box, you might want to put a prayer box and pray for people and uh, have just, you can put their name and place for their address and birthday if you want us to send you a birthday card. Uh, you'd be surprised how that'd make a difference to some people. And so you might want to put a prayer box or build a blessing box and prayer box combination. Then some of you, it's been suggested school involvement. I got this note before tonight. It says, call nearby schools, ask what their needs are. Ideas, small sizes of underwear, socks, extra clothes, snacks, craft items, Ziploc bags, plastic Walmart bags, cookies for the teachers. Backpacks. What's that? Backpacks. backpacks, filling up the backpacks. So if you want to do outreach with the school system, then you'll want to put your 
Now, just because these don't all get votes, the top four votes, doesn't mean we can't go ahead and do them. It just, you know, the, the, the top four is just what we'll work on now. But we'd like, these are suggestions all of you had, or different ones of you had, so we want to continue to work on them anyway. 100% involvement. What would that take to get 100% involvement into something? What did we say? What was the word that was used twice in our scripture last night? Appointed. Appointed. How do you appoint people? Brandon, can you come up here just a minute? I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to appoint somebody. Brandon, how are you doing, brother? Swell. Good, good. I haven't seen you since this afternoon. True. Yeah. yeah. Have you been doing good? Doing well. Thank great, you. Great, great. You know, you've got a good bass voice, good singer. Thank you. You're a good young man, got a great family. You got a wife that puts up with you. I mean, that's really something, believe me, having a wife that'll put up with you, that's a tremendous blessing. True. <laughs> Say, Where are say, you going with this, John? What's that? Where are you going with this? Where am I going with this? Well, Brandon, I tell you, you are so talented. Thank you. I was just wondering if you could help with our youth. Yes. Thank you, Brandon. Let's get together and talk about it. Thank you very much. I'm God, but forward. just give him a big hand. He just got appointed, didn't he? <laughs> That's how you appoint somebody. <laughs> Actually, Brandon's been thinking a lot about that, and, and he's got some help with it, too. So, so I'm excited, and he's excited uh, to see what's, what, what's going to be coming very, very soon. Events in the park, like singings in the park, picnics, having baseball games, uh, that kind of stuff. I know one church that went uh, once a month to the park during decent weather, during the summer and fall and spring, decent weather, and they'd have a softball game, and then they'd bring their watermelon and their uh, cold drinks and all that kind of stuff and just had a blast. Everybody looked forward to it, and I think there were more people that came on that Sunday night than came at any other time <laughs> during the week. I mean, it was something that people really looked forward to. And then that branched off into a football that came between the Avenue T Church of Christ in Temple and the Northside Church of Christ in Temple. And that was wild to see that. <laughs> Bunch of overweight men sitting out there <laughs> playing football. <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> we started out uh, tackle football, and that didn't last very long. <clears throat> uh, small groups. You know, y'all have had small groups in the past. Is that something you really believe in? Um, you can have small groups at home. Uh, doesn't have to be on a church night. You can have, uh, you can invite your friends and neighbors over. To start a good small group, you need two families or two people to, from the church to start it and then you invite neighbors and friends from people around. It can be two ladies that start it and have a ladies group. It can be a husband and wife and get couples. Uh, it can be uh, a man and he can get guys to come, two men to get guys to come or whatever. Um, you can also go to, do all have halfway houses here from uh, the prisons? Or the halfway house, that is a great place to do evangelism and to do small groups. It's better than doing prison ministry. And let me tell you why. It's better for you. Prison ministry is great. You know, thousands of people have come to Christ through the prison ministry. But, but if you want to build up the church here, then you need to get access to people who, who actually can come and be a part of the church. And the halfway houses, uh, usually they live in the area, if they're county, and you can work, you can have small groups there, and they love it. And then number 12 is, we talked about just briefly, 
Uh, I saw a few faces squint, but who knows? We'll put it up there, door knocking campaign. This is ideal. This community is ideal for door knocking. There are four groups, one from Alabama, one from Lawton, Oklahoma, one from East Texas, and one from somewhere. And they will go and do, oh, oh, from Pennsylvania. They may not come down. But, but the other three will come and do door knocking with us, with us. And they're very good, especially the ones from East Texas. And well, all three of them are very good. And they use different methods. And they, they just eat up neighborhoods like this because they're middle class on down. And those are the ones who will talk to you. Uh, you can't get into some of these new neighborhoods. They won't even let you in. But, but a, a door knocking campaign would work real well here. Okay, then there's nursing home. Uh, this note said, uh, call nursing homes in the area, ask what they might need, help with cards for residents, socks, craft items, activity, books, puzzles. Okay, the people in the nursing homes we're commanded the true and pure and undefiled religion is to visit, care for the widows and orphans. So that's one thing to do, but they also have children that really appreciate, live in the area, and appreciate you visiting their mom and dad. And, and they, they are good prospects if you work with mom and dad. And then also the suggestion uh, for a basketball go out in the back. Uh, one that's not too expensive, but one that's not going to tear up either. And also a suggestion was made to repair the van where we might could go pick up a couple of families that might need, uh, that might need some transportation. Well, anyway, we put all of them on giant posters for you. And uh, we spared uh, no expense to... to to put them on those giant posters because I already had them. So we spared no expense to get them. Everyone receives the five stickers. So write your names on each label. You vote the top four goals with any color but green. And then the green one, the green label, place the green label with your name on the team you choose in the Habanero ministry. And then we want to choose team leaders and coordinators from the bottom one, those who will sign up for that. And then setting up our table, the habanier, you can see it out there, the habanier box will be in the middle, the gifts will be on the right, and on the left will be the sign-up sheets and the whoop sheets and some of the bags for you to take out. And if you want, you know what Jim explained that they did at... Uh, uh, Freetown Road in, in uh, Grand Prairie, that really turned that church around when they were doing that. And they've kind of had a hiccup, but they're going back to the Habanera to what worked before, and they're going back to it, and they'll be successful, and they'll start growing again. But, the, you know, the, the COVID thing hurt all of us. It really did. And we've got to get back to work. So, uh, and we'll also put Bibles with the gifts because they, we need to go ahead and order some, um, if it's all right, uh, we need to order some um, uh, World Bible School Bibles. I think they're about $5 a piece. Is that okay, guys? Get a few of those. And of course, I explained Team So yesterday. Uh, these items, if you haven't gotten to see them, these ladies make them from the Faith Village Church of Christ, and they've been sent all over the place, all over the country, and have helped to bring in young families. They love it. They love it. You see a young family come in, they just shower them with all the stuff, goodies they've got. A uh, little church in Nebraska had great success with that. And then uh, set up... Uh, uh, set up meeting days and times for your group to meet. Now, you can decide to do what you want to do. Faith Village told me I'm, I've got to come back down and do it again. They had me do it on Sunday morning when 
the habanier and explain it when the majority of the people would be there. And then they had nothing but sign-up sheets. They had a whole sheet for red, green, blue, and, and then uh, team leaders and yellow. And uh, when I did it before COVID, over 80 people signed up uh, for it. And so they were ready to go, and then COVID hit, and kaboom, that happened. So I've got to go back. The elders want me to come back and do it again. And they're going to devote one Sunday night for the team leaders, or for the teams to meet, like the red teams. You, you want to be able to meet at least once a month and discuss your experiences. What happened when you went out? What was the result? Because that builds people up. That encourages other people. And even if you just said, well, I just took it, put the bag on their door and ran. Well, they're not going to say that. Well, I took it to their door and braved three dogs. And I think they were all uh, bulldogs and, you know, whatever. I, I, you know, I was scared, but I did it anyway. And God was with me. And I put the bag on their doorknob and I walked briskly out of there. So anyway, but that's good to share those things with each other. When, uh, we'd get together when we'd knock doors and we would share those times together, what happened. And it's the tough ones that you really remember. Terry Casey, y'all, how many of y'all remember Terry Casey? Okay, Terry Casey uh, and I were, were door knocking partners when we went to school at, at uh, Preston Road. And we were went to... Um, Somewhere in the Houston area. Uh, I can't remember where. Clear Lake, yes. And so we had some interesting people that lived there. Uh, we went up to, we were going down the street, and we were going up to this one door, and they had a sign on it that says, you don't beat on my door, and I don't beat on your face. And Terry said, come on, let's go. I said, <laughs> I'll sit here and watch. <laughs> well, I think he finally decided against it. I said, Terry, he doesn't want us to come and knock on his door. He can answer to God about that in the judgment day. So anyway, set up meeting times and ask God to bless your efforts for his glory. We have a lot of work to do. If we'll do it and work together in whatever area we're talented and then start appointing people to help us, right? You remember how to appoint people. Is, it, is that hard to do? Yeah. I mean, you got to sell the congregation before you can sell your neighbor on Jesus Christ, don't you? Yeah. So uh, we, we got to start somewhere. And um, anyway, the team leaders are also the ones who help with gifts, who help man the table or woman the table. And... Uh, and also who keep up with uh, everything and make sure that uh, the uh, visitation sheets in the file are updated as best as possible. Some aren't. Like in the blue, you're going to be just sending out. And we're going to, we asked, I asked a couple of the elders yesterday if we could uh, get, um, uh, get one of these uh, places that will give you uh, if you put in their name, they'll give you their address, phone number, all the pertinent information, whether they were criminal or not and stuff. I mean, they give you all kinds of information, but we're not looking for that. We're just looking for their name and address and maybe their email address. So uh, that's basically what we're looking for. And we want to make sure that's all we look at, too. We don't want to be biased. Okay, well... We're about out of time, so let's uh, come on up now with your stickers and help yourself. Uh-huh. The van's ready to go? Okay, so don't, put, don't waste a sticker on the van. And number four will be done Friday. So don't waste your sticker on number 16 or number four. Okay, y'all come on up. Everybody votes.
And if, if you can't climb up the stairs, give it to somebody who can. Okay, that would be the, um, that'd be the green team, yeah. The green team also visits people in nursing homes and hospitals. Oh, okay. John, can you turn me back? Yeah, I'm on. Okay, we really need greeters and degreeters. You know what a degreeter is? A greeter is when you come in the in in, and if I have kids, you show them to their class, you greet them, you show them where they need to go, you thank them for being here, and fill out a visitor form. A degreeter. They're back there as they go out the door. If anybody walks in here that's a visitor and they're not greeted or degreeted, then we need a whipping. <laughs> because we're not going to keep many visitors if we don't do that. <laughs> 